Dr. b a n s h a from t h o m a s a t University Thailand. So thank you Lin Watek and l e m i t e c h team, Professor Lee, for this kind of invitation. Uh, I'm talking about the three-in-one hole, a new less invasive and speedy loaded cuff repair using triple loaded Y knot and pop lock. So this article changed my concept about the knot tying and the fit from the middle row. Uh, you see from the video, you can see that the west l o c k obstruct by the knot tying. Okay. And this article mentioned that the conventional suture bridge technique may help up to 59% of type 2 tear or the muscular tenderness tear of the loaded cuff. Okay? So it's less common in single row and le not less suture bridge technique. So after, after this, I look in the articles. Professor Lee also report about the, his modified Mason Allen's middle long stitch. They have less Uh, type 2 tear comparing to the conventional knot tying technique. So I did the study, the conventional knot tying and the knotless, we call that a dozen, that's 12 sutures, to t i p p e l o a d knotless suture bridge technique. And we evaluate the average pressure and also the contact area and pressure distribution in c a d a v e r s And we found that in the conventional knot tying, There is a lot of very high contact pressure at the middle footprint, comparing to the knotless, okay, suture bridge technique, and that's why we have type 2 tear because of the very high contact pressure at the middle footprint, okay, and also we we evaluate the contact area. We found that the contact area of the knotless adosan suture bridge technique is significantly higher. Comparing to the conventional knot tying technique, okay. So after that, we did the knotless. Okay, we stopped doing the knot tying. We do knotless. Okay, and we found that our result is getting better. We have less type 2 tear, and our retail rate is less comparing to the knot tying group. Okay. So this is one of the patient referred to me. Yeah. He has the loaded cuff tear after the very really nice loaded cuff repair. You see that the tear site is proximal. This is at the muscle tendinous junction. You see that the tear site is at the medial footprint. So I did the loaded cuff revision for this patient without removing the footprint. Okay. So after that, the, we use a triple load. Um, Why not? And also the pop lock. So after that, the patient have good results, and you see the MRI is healed nicely. Okay, this is the uh, not less suture bridge, and we publish this article, the technique to repair the muscular tenderness tear or type 2 tear, and uh, report in the arthroscopic technique. And we prefer this technique very much, and try to popularize this technique because it's more anatomic. Uh, reduction, decrease dog ear formation, better pressure distribution, and decrease tension at the muscular tendon junction, result in type 2 tear. But one day I talked to Professor j u h a n O. j u h a n O said, "Oh, b a n s h a your technique looks so nice. Why don't you put the camera into the joint to see what happened inside? Okay, you look from outside is nice. So I, I believe him. So after that, this is one example that also changed my." Practice. You see that I did the very nice, very secure fixation, a dozen suture bridge. When I put the camera inside the joint, oh my God! You see that? There's the medial row is not is not compressed. But this patient, I I make one knot in the back, and not less in the front. So you see that in the back here, this one is very nice contact. But this one, I didn't tie the knot. There still have gap underneath the loaded cuff. So that changed my tactics. Thank you, Dr. j u h a n o Okay, you see, look outside is good, but there's a gap inside. Okay. So after that, I try to change my technique. So even this patient, she has the gap underneath the loaded the cuff. I check the MRI post op. It's look not too not too bad. So that's why my result is good because even I didn't tie the knot, but the cuff look nice. But I'm not sure that. 
is this really good because from the view you did you see that there's still the gap underneath so i propose this idea we call this a three in one okay not hole in one this is three in one okay so one hole i put three suture one two three four you will have 12 sutures so these 12 sutures you go three 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 so you see the color is different right so we try to go to the anterior part this is the comma tissue area also we go into the infraspinatus because we want our rotator cuff to be really the footprint will be really wide suture attachment and area of contact will be wider okay so after that you just tie three knot the first knot is the yellow one the second one is a white one and in the middle you connecting the front and the back I use different sutures so I will not confuse the green one and the purple one okay and we leave this six suture on the middle side okay so you understand we have 12 sutures but we make only three knots okay so and after that you spread your suture like this okay so in the lateral row there will be six and six okay so that's combining the knot tying and not less okay this is the high bridge we did tie the knot that much because if you tie the knot you make a too close you can cut through the tissue so that's why i make this spread okay so the whole the up, uh, distance between the hole is about eight millimeters so you can see that this is an after repair you can see that's a knot tying and also that's a knot less it's a combination right like that way okay so that's my idea okay so on the lateral row you need to put the first in the very anterior cross to the bicepital groove in that area the bone quality is also very good in the back i try to put my anchor really close to the infraspinatus that area is very really close to the posterior cortex okay so that area also have very really good bone stock okay so using this technique you widen the lateral footprint also so the suture bridge will be very really wide and you have better contact area i use big chair position so when i put the anchor in the back i do internal rotation when i do anterior anchor i put external rotation so it's very really easy for the big chair position but for the lateral decubitus maybe it's not so easy to rotate like this okay so that is my yeah so like like this this is an l-shaped chair so first you need to decide this is a comma tissues you put the first hole here second one here third one here and another one cross to the infraspinatus okay so you need to have the good design like this one first we make a micro fracture at the footprint okay we use the uh, triple load why not okay and then pass the suture in okay like we design if this l shape very important you need to secure this apex we call the apex reduction so you pass one suture in the anterior cuff into the rotator uh, into the comma tissues okay so the hole with the distance between the hole will be wider because we try to spread it so you have less chance of the strangulation okay and then we put the pop lock on the lateral side okay like that way okay so this is the way i do okay for the lateral low cuff um okay that way you have uh, combined not and not less okay so this is an article for that if you put the anchors too far too lateral you can cut through the tissue you should put it medial to the uh rotator cable right the hole between the rotator cuff should be should be not too not too close if you go too close you can cut through the tissues if you put eight sutures into the rotator cuff you cut through that's why there's a lot of type 2 tear in the past okay so now i know we need to spread it wider okay so we still have the draw of the suture bridge not less suture bridge for the bursal side tear so for bursal side tear i try to preserve my articular side and we can use this suture bridge okay for the bursal side tear okay no not tying for this bursal side tear and we publish this in the arthroscopy journal so another patient this is a massive loaded cuff tear she has super spinatus in first spinatus tear is a very big size tear so first 
you need to uh, release the rotator cuff from the coracoid process. Release the coracohumeral ligament, right? Make sure that your cuff is tension free. So this is the key concept when you repair the rotator cuff and find the apex of the cuff, okay? First is the tissue mobilizations and then we reduce the apex of the rotator cuff. We make a high bridge, not tying and also not less, okay? And finally, we get this result, okay? So this is the MRI after the surgery and she has a good function after that. So this is another patient, she is 47 years old, ladies. I just done it last week. So the way I tell you the trick, you make two, okay, and one, not three in one hole because it's impossible. It will, it, the suture cannot pass. So you make two, we have one knot with two suture, another knot with one suture, and then you can pass this into your rotator cuff. And this is less trauma to your rotator cuff. Just one hole, you have three sutures, okay, like that way. And then you try to spread your lot or the distance between the hole, not make it too close, okay? And then not tying. So I tie the knot like I show you in the diagram. We tying the first one anteriorly, the second one posteriorly, and the middle one. This is, you see that? That's different colors, okay? So you're not confused, this is in the middle. So you have only three not tying, okay? And the leg is free, okay? After that, you make the lateral low. Okay, same like I show you, you uh, the first hole should be close to the bicipital groove, especially if the patient has osteoporosis. This area is very strong bone. And another hole is in the back, close to the infraspinatus. Okay, and that is the final repair. So you have not tying and also you have the not less. Okay, so after that, I put my camera into the joint so you see that this is a patient that i changed my practice right but this is the this is this patient we did not tie you see that is is totally different left and right this is not less this is not tying but it's limited not tying only three not tying okay this is another patient has a massive cuff tear from trauma have the severe load of the cuff tear superspinatus infraspinatus and then proximal migration. So this can be the patient, I will try to repair your cuff because this trauma is six months already. And the patient have, you see muscle atrophy? It looks so bad, right? So anyway, we do, uh, we literally make five portals, okay? So first we try to pull the cuff, it's, it's very big, cannot reduce to the footprint, okay? The next step is to release. I think this is a very critical step. You need to release your cuff from above, from the colocoid process, release the colocoid humeral ligament, right? After that, this is colocoid process, right? Most of the time in the chronic, massive loaded cuff is always stuck there, okay? After you release that, and also this patient, I try to release the uh, capsule also, the, IGHL and also NGHL, okay, the post -off, that would reduce the post-off uh, stiffness, okay. Medial side, most of the time, I use only two, but this patient, we use three because it's extending to the infraspinatus also, okay. And then we pass the suture in, okay. So after that, we make a knot tying on the medial side and we try to reduce the apex, okay. This is like a big L-shaped tear, okay. So we tie the knot, also we combine, and this is the, uh, but the lateral low, we always use only two lateral low. This patient, I use three middle low, right? But for the lateral low, I put two, right? One close to the bicep group, right close to the posterior cortex, right? So that is the, actually a, a pop lock can put seven. The maximum I put is seven. Right, this patient, I think I put seven, not six, seven and seven, right? So post of rehabilitation, we need to be very gentle because it's a very massive tear. So this is three months after that, the patient is good. External rotation is getting better. He's a foreigner, he's a Western, 
Yeah, and also his cup function is getting much better. Before surgery, he is the pseudo paralytic patient, and this is cup heal nicely. Okay, this infraspinatus and also supraspinatus healing. So we collecting the patients now using this new technique, and till now we quite happy with our results, comparing our not tying, totally not not less. So I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle, Professor Lee, yeah, my teacher, Dr. O, my friends, I'm in the middle. I'm not, th not tying with not less, in the middle. The benefit of this technique is less trauma to the cuff. You have only four holes in your cuff, less blood supply disturbance, less strangulation, and less operating time. Okay? Thank you very much. The, this year we moved the, our app class 2020 to December. It is, this is pre-course is the irreparable rotator cuff course with three musketeers, uh, Teru Mihata, El Hassan, and Pascal Balo. Okay, please come to Thailand. See you in Thailand in December 3 to 5 and visit our website, appcast2020.org. Thank you.